Good morning, and welcome back to Margin. This morning, I want to talk about part two of obstacles, more specifically, talking about your relationship with money. So let's jump right into it. So let's be honest, we've all met those uh, highly educated people who have been uh, literally taught to think, to critically think, to critically look at uh, how to build a case study for something or how to resolve a certain issue. Uh, And oftentimes I've seen uh, some of these same people basically work for companies to to optimize someone else's portfolio, someone else's business, someone else's livelihood, and someone else's um, legacy. And and unfortunately, you, this is an example where you have um, you have all this skill set, you have all this capability that is never really put fully uh, to work because. Uh, you're building someone else's legacy. You're building up someone else's, um, you know, plan for your life, as I mentioned in a previous episode. So that's something we all have to be careful about. We have to look at it from the standpoint of it's okay to be an employee. It is fully okay to have that nine to five. I'm one who also has a nine to five, but, um, but at the same time, you need to know your why, why, why are you doing that? And is that a good fit for you for the long haul? So Robert Kiyosaki, um, Uh, refers to various quadrants that people operate in. Uh, One of which is uh, the employee quadrant, one's the self-employed quadrant, one's the business owner quadrant, and one's the investor quadrant. And uh, and and most of us, uh, you know, fall into one of those quadrants, or maybe more than one of those quadrants. Uh, but oftentimes, when I look at a self-employed uh, individual, they may have a skill set, they may have some th- type of trade that they've learned uh, that they have maybe stepped out from being employed by someone else to provide that value, um, but. But oftentimes when they move into that self-employment quadrant and start their own business, they're still an active part of that business and they can't necessarily build that bridge to get to a point where they're actually managing systems instead of people. And uh, there's nothing wrong with being an employee at all. But oftentimes what I find is people get stuck um, in that uh, rat race, in that flywheel that uh, they're building for someone else, uh, where they are a critical piece of someone else's puzzle and they don't know how to necessarily step out and start their own thing. They see all the benefits of being a business owner. They see all the benefits of maybe even being an investor. Uh, But when it comes to them themselves, they operate with what's in front of them and they can't necessarily build the bridge to what that bigger picture vision would be uh, if they were to build up systems or if they were to invest in things bigger and greater than uh, than being self-employed or being an employee for someone else. So I had a conversation with a uh, with a coach of mine recently who I was having a conversation around the topic of why people don't act. You know, why people may watch, they may listen, they may learn, but they don't necessarily apply it to their own personal life. They may become a silo of knowledge, um, but that silo of knowledge doesn't necessarily translate to them taking action on the things that they're learning. So a lot of people operate with this fear of failure, the fear of the unknown, or the fear that they may actually accomplish what they set out to accomplish. And oftentimes this is what holds people back from going out and starting that small business, going out and taking the trade that you've learned, and instead of being a cog in someone else's system, uh, stepping out and becoming uh, or building the uh, the business where you can actually take that trade and extrapolate it out. So I've always loved the quote that nothing worth doing is easy. Nothing worth doing doesn't take time and effort and dedication. And oftentimes you see these people that step out and seemingly uh, gain fame overnight. They they seemingly step out and have all this skill set uh, and and basically. Uh, defy normal, defy gravity in the sense of their ability to catapult out. So oftentimes I see people neither work hard nor smart when it comes to their personal finances. Uh, They may take a couple steps forward and five steps back. It may be something where it's a constant 
um, fluctuation on their level of dedication around their personal finances. And oftentimes I can see uh, almost the uh, the roller coaster of a ride that they, they, they go on uh, because of um, having certain seasons where they're focused on their debt and they want to pay off their debt. And in other seasons where they're just having a heyday, they're going out and buying things that they can't afford to impress people that they don't even care to impress. So oftentimes these people think that there's no strategic plan necessarily for them. That's left to the smart people. That should be uh, given to their financial advisor or or maybe they just follow in their uh, parents or grandparents' footsteps being that generations have handled their money that way. Uh, but I think that oftentimes people end up opting out of actually making decisions around their personal finances. They see those obstacles of getting involved and in actually having to make decisions around their personal finances as completely daunting. So they, they become paralyzed and they don't do anything at all. I believe that you win at what you focus on. And, and oftentimes what we focus on uh, can be the negative connotations around money. We can focus on um, how something didn't work for someone else and it can leave us in a place where we don't take action. We don't um, end up being proactive with our personal finances because it is something that seems so daunting. It seems like such a big obstacle uh, for us to overcome. So in regards to obstacles, there's a quote that I love by Chambers. And the quote says, a river is victoriously persistent, uh, overcoming all barriers. For a while, it goes steadily on its course, but then comes to an obstacle. And for a while, it is blocked, yet it soon makes a pathway around the obstacle. Or a river will drop out of sight for miles, only later to emerge again even broader and greater than ever. Never focus your eyes on the obstacles or the difficulties. And oftentimes, we focus our eyes exactly on those two things. We focus our eyes on the obstacle, on the difficulty, or on the obstacles, plural, and the difficulties. We look at things from how many ways can I look at this to where I can stop in my tracks to not move forward because I see so much of a hindrance between me and managing my personal finance as well. So you have a decision to make. Are you going to put your head down and hands to the plow, push through and figure out what your strategic plan needs to be for your personal finances? Or are you going to leave it to chance? Are you going to leave it to uh, what and how generations previously have managed personal finance in your family or uh, to a investment professional rather than being actively involved in it? And that's the decision you have to make. But my encouragement to you today is the fact that you can do this. I believe it was Darren Hardy that once said that nothing is difficult. The steps have just yet to be defined. And so often we look at the aspects of life that we need to work through. We need to figure out solutions for. And yet we look at the elephant in the room. We look at the the um, the excuses. We look at all the challenges that we could potentially face rather than looking at it from a standpoint of, okay, well, just like you would do with your vision, you're going to look at that difficulty and you're going to break it down into palatable steps, into steps that you can actually carry out on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis to ultimately help change the trajectory of your life. So my call to action today is look at your obstacles, the obstacles you have right now. Don't focus on them, but be aware of them. Look at them from the standpoint of, okay, is this something that is actually a, a molehill that I'm making a mountain out of, or is this a seemingly harmless object that is casting a massive shadow? And think of it from the standpoint of, okay, well, this is an obstacle. Can I go around, you know, above, below, so on and so forth. What can I do to overcome this obstacle, to build a pathway 
uh, to, to overcome that challenge uh, in my personal finances. So I would challenge you today to look at your finances from that standpoint. What is the obstacle you're facing? What are you trying to overcome? If this information is helpful to you, explore the margin membership where me and my team will help you take the information you're learning and apply it to your life and your finances. I have built an interactive course that allows me and my team to connect with you and come alongside people like you to help you revamp your finances and build margin into your life. Click the link in the description below if you're interested. We hope to see you there.